Alright guys, so this will be a review of NZG's Caterpillar 5130B backhoe uh, version. Uh, this edition is the launch edition, so um, it does have minor different things than the other version, which is the normal version. This one features metal tracks, and I believe that they are serial numbered. Um, I, I also realize that most people watching this review aren't watching it because they're going to buy one. Um, not to say that that won't happen, but I realize that most people watching this will watch it just to mainly get an idea of the model. And um, I'm going to go through it for both viewers, for someone actually wanting to buy one and to just watch it to see the model. Um, and if you haven't noticed, I have mainly uh, did away with the reviews, with the pictures in them, but I will go through different parts. So. To start off, the first part of the review here will be of the functions, and uh, this model does have great functions, and I just have to focus my camera real quick, and then I'll get to them. So, um, the functions, obviously, it spins a 360 on the on the carriage. I'm not going to show it spinning a 360, but um, it will spin a 360. The tracks roll, uh, both on the rubber track edition and the launch version here. Um, obviously they will roll a little bit better on the metal track version. The stick uh, comes in that far and it will go out that far which is really nice movement. The bucket will go back that far which is again perfect movement and then it will come in that far which is once again very good movement. Uh, the boom will raise to right there which is more than enough and then it will lower maximum digging depth is to around right there and if you want to display it on a bench it's around right there so it's not the best but uh, it's nothing to really uh, complain about because I'm, I'm sure most people um, don't really have a bench to display this on although some will another cool feature is that the ladder right here comes down and I don't know how it works but if you notice you can lock it in place in most positions and then the one on the other side as well and this one sometimes I have a little hard time bringing it down but um, this one will come down for some reason it really comes out past the tracks I'm not sure if that's my model or if that's um, all of them but that one will also come down um, so you can see it has a lot of cool features uh, next thing I want to show is the detail on it um, now, um, obviously the model doesn't have as much detail as today's models because this was manufactured, I think, in the mid-90s, possibly early 90s. It's obviously missing stuff like uh, flexible hydraulic hoses and more obvious things like, you know, etched walkways and everything, but for the most part, it's very decent. Um, one thing that I do not like at all, and this is probably my only complaint on the model, um, because there's really no excuse for it, is the teeth on the bucket. The teeth on the bucket really just look hideous, and there's really no excuse for it. Back then, you couldn't really do etched walkways, or not that you couldn't do them, but, you know, it was rare to see a model with them. Um, but there's really no excuse for the teeth. I don't know why they're that short. Um, I wish I could replace them, but, you know, I, I don't want to make it a mess and, you know, have it look worse than it is. Um, besides that, uh, bucket is, you know, pretty plain. There's really not that much wear plating. Um, on the bottom, there is. Uh, um, so, besides the teeth, it's pretty nice. You can see the teeth do have nice uh, plating to them even on the bottom uh, but the sides of the bucket are pretty plain and whatnot um, the good thing about it though the linkage has painted pins as you could see um, and bad thing is though if you curl the bucket and you can, you can see that they painted it all on each other so uh, that's not the best how it's like that but I normally don't display it like that anyway uh, coming up the stick, it's a typical mass excavator stick, very short, so there's not going to be any auxiliary hydraulic lines or anything like that on it. Um, once again, most of the pins are painted. 
Uh, surprisingly, the hydraulics are fairly good on this model. The only ones that are bad on mine are on the, the boom lift. Uh, coming to the rest of the boom over here, nothing crazy. Like I said, it lacks the hydraulic lines. Uh, both the ones that run on the back of the boom and uh, the ones that run to the cylinders. There are some type of casting, which I will show right now on the back of the boom, but I don't quite understand what it's supposed to be. It kind of just looks like two lines. Um, I'll show the right side now. Uh, now the body um, mainly has all the detail of the model. And uh, I'm actually a very big fan of it. Uh, one thing I want to say is I really like the color of this model. I think it's very nicely balanced with the cat yellow and the black. And I think the railings do a, a very good job of that. Um, starting from the bottom and then going to the top. This step over here, um, the person who I bought it from um, obviously glued it on. So I still have to glue mine on. And I still haven't done it yet because, I mean, it really doesn't need it. But, um... The, the ladder right here itself is all metal, and it's it's actually pretty nicely made, and uh, I guess it's only supposed to come down that far, but uh, that's how the ladder works. It just slides on that little thing right there, and I just push it in. I'm not sure exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, now, the good thing is, even over here, there is um, textured on the catwalk. This is how you get up to the top of the machine. And uh, then the, the, the grill over here is touched and the ladder is actually printed in there and obviously it's cast in and it's all metal. Uh, the side of it, which has the decal, uh, the decals are very nice and vivid. Uh, this isn't etched through, but I think they somehow did it with, a, with the decal where you could actually feel it. Um, and I don't know how they did that, but it, it's actually really nicely done. Uh, the counterweight is pretty plain, it's just a flat piece of die cast metal with a decal. Um, there's nothing really crazy about it. And the right side, which is my favorite side, um, is pretty much the same as the other side. Over here there is some vent detail. It's etched. Um, they, they did the same thing with the decal over here. Here's a close-up of the ladder. It's all metal, which is very nice. Um, the catwalk that goes around the cab over here also has the textured on top. Um, coming over here. Uh, before I go to the top of the machine, uh, these lights, or these things that represent lights over here, are uh, plastic. As long as the one with the on, the one on top of the cab over here is also plastic, and that pops right off. Um, and you know, the boom mount down in there is really nothing crazy. Um, it's just the way that you see it is how it is in person too. Um, the inside of the cab is actually very detailed and I don't normally go over cabs that often. I don't know if you could see the inside but the inside is actually I mean I consider that detailed. It does have that blue glass on it but I always feel like that blue, that blue glass really represents the older cat models. Um, also want to put out there before I get to the top of the decking of the machine all the railings on the model are metal, so it doesn't really lack a build quality whatsoever at all. And that's something that you don't often see on models that we buy current day today. Um, now the top obviously isn't going to compare to a model today, because if this was a model today you would see a lot more detail in here. Um, but the top uh, the catwalks and I think it's a very cool model uh, because of these catwalks. It's like a whole house up here. Um, but uh, top of the catwalk has all the textured uh, walkways. All these ladders that you see up here are metal. Um, unfortunately, in the house of the machine over here, there's really nothing in there. It's just all completely flat. Um, luckily enough, I don't uh, display this model to look through because if I... If I did, I probably wouldn't like it too much. Um, but looking at it from the side, you can't really tell. But once again, if you show it from up here, you can definitely tell. The exhausts over here are metal. And I'm going to turn it so then you can see the other side. Um, the exhausts over here are metal. And uh, they did go as far as putting the little rubber hydraulic lines over here. But I think there's uh, six of them. And then they only lead two up the boom, which is very unfortunate. And uh, here's pretty much what the inside of the body looks like. And a close-up of the textured walkways. Uh, back of the cab does represent the doors, but 
There's no handles or anything, unfortunately. Now we'll go to the undercarriage. And uh, the undercarriage is probably my favorite part of the machine. So, going to the undercarriage now. Um, one thing about this one compared to the rubber one, and I'm rubber, I mean the metal rubber tracks one, is I think that these metal tracks are just awesome. I, I mean, you can tell they're only single grousers, but for some reason I just really like these metal tracks, and I don't know what it is. I think it's the way that NZG painted this model. If you tell, all the paint on it is flat black instead of gloss black. I really don't like gloss black when it comes to models. But uh, the on the carriage, the track frame isn't too detailed, as you can see. There's really nothing to it, and there goes my ladder. Um, but they do represent some rollers. Uh, the good thing about it is the tracks roll very nicely, um, like so, and they're very durable. Um, and they also give the model a very nice look. They're not the most realistic looking tracks, but I feel like they're they're very they suit the model very well. Um, and there it goes again. I have to glue that after this, but um, regardless, I wish that they would have did something a little bit better with the drive motors because I feel like that is kind of missing out on the model a lot. But uh, for now, that will do. Um, now, the last segment of the video I want to get to is, is the model worth it? And um, it's kind of going to be a hard one to do because it really depends on how much you could buy the model for. Um, and let me just set this up real quick. So for those wondering uh, if the model is worth it, it all depends on what you could buy it for. I bought this one for 439 shipped to my house, which I thought was a fair deal. I probably wouldn't pay more than 480 for this um, current day 2012. Um, years down the line, it's probably going to go for more. Uh, if you could find one for 400 and below, I would definitely pick one up. Um, bad thing is, it's doesn't have the detail as much as today's models but I feel like it looks a lot better than today's models and it you know it has the build quality probably better than a model from current day that's built today but again it's a very expensive and sometimes a very hard to find model um, you know it, it's hard to say if it's detailed or not because the second you bring up detail, someone brings up WSI, and obviously it's not going to compare it to a WSI model. And most people watching this video will probably compare it to a WSI model. And I feel like you really can't compare it to a model that's built today because it's it was built so long ago. It was built over probably probably built 50, over 15 years ago. Um, but overall, a really nice model. My only complaint is the teeth on the bucket, um, and it's a huge model as well. So you definitely get your money's worth.